Hello and welcome to The Side Shed. My name is Matt Jones. And before we dive into this episode, I just want to make a quick mention of a program that we've got coming up in August. If you're like me, you love to ski and you love to surf. However, it's hard sometimes trying to justify the time to get away and actually, you know, go on holiday and spend a bit of time with yourself. For me, I'm always wanting to, if, if I'm not investing into the business, then it's something that doesn't really get a priority. So with that in mind, we've developed a program which enables you to do both. Coming up in August in New Zealand, in Wanaka, we're holding our very first Learn and Ski. And at Learn and Ski, you're gonna be able to come along. We're gonna ski in the mornings. We're gonna do a workshop in the afternoon. And then at night, we're probably going to party. It's gonna be a lot of fun. There's gonna be a lot of like-minded businesses coming along there. Basically people that enjoy the snow and enjoy investing in themselves and their businesses. A bit of time out, you're gonna learn some cool stuff. And of course, we're gonna to get to play on some of the best mountains in the Southern Hemisphere. So uh, hopefully you guys can make it if you wanna come along. You can head across to the siteshed.com forward slash events and that will take you to the page where you can um, get some more information on that. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So hopefully we'll see you there. Hello and welcome to Toolbox Talks. My name is Matt Jones and we are coming up to episode two of the three-part series that I'm conducting with my co-host, Ellen Raw. Uh, the series is called Business Uncomplicated and this episode is called Business Planning Made Easy. If you missed the first episode, go back and check it out because it's totally relevant and this one leads into it perfectly. Uh, that one was called Get a Grip on Your Financials and that was episode 47. Okay, enjoy. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello and welcome back to Toolbox Talks. You are joined today by myself and the lovely Ellen Raw, who is my co-host in this series where we're talking business uncomplicated. Ellen, welcome back to the microphone. Cheers. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for joining us once again. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I love your show. I love you. I love our conversations. Let's, yeah. let's help uh, make money and save the world, shall we? Absolutely. Let's, let's fly that flag. So um, <laughs> in the first episode, we um, for, for any of the listeners out there that missed it, um, we were talking about getting a grip on your financials. And if you did miss it, I would strongly suggest you go back and check it out because Ellen dropped some absolute bombs in that episode. Of course, there will no, be a link. No bad language. I was pretty good about my language. <laughs> no, what I say, what, is that what that means oh, no, in the States if I said like, Bombs of wisdom. Okay. All right. Yeah, right. Okay. Sorry, there's a bit of a language barrier there, I think. Yeah, it was a US thing. <laughs> so anyway, in this episode, Ellen, we're going to be talking about business planning made easy. Now, um, this is an important subject. Why have we decided to talk about this? Well, I, I was um, talking in the last episode, the, the overarching theme of our series is business uncomplicated. And what I've learned over the years is that we can simplify and streamline and pare away the stuff that keeps us so busy, but doesn't really get us where we want to go. And if we do that, what's left? Well, one thing is getting a grip on the financials. It's sometimes the last thing you want to do, but we address that in the, in the, the first part of the series. And as you get the scorecard in place, you can, you can assess if this is where I am and I put a little budget together, set some financial goals, that's where I want to be. Now, how am I going to get there? And so that's where business planning comes into play. And for myself personally, that really describes my journey. When I was you know, struggling as the plumber's wife once upon a time, I was supposed to be counting the money, but we never had any. We argued, we fought, we went into debt. Once I got a handle on the money and significantly raised my prices, Matt, life got really, really good. And one thing, if you're jotting notes down, money buys options. Mm. Money buys options. When you have more money, you have more options, you have more freedom. And you have the freedom to then ask bigger questions. Okay, now that I've stopped the bleeding and I have some wherewithal, what do I want to do? So I turned to my husband, the plumber, Hot Rod, and I said, so <laughs> what do you want? And interestingly, he said, I want to work all by myself. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Totally. And I was mad and angry and I was, you know, however, it's his business. And one of the things I've learned, and this is one of the reasons I learned it, is that there is room for one person's vision at the top of an organization. Ultimately, there has to be a president. Yeah. And it was his company. 
And so that was a business planning lesson. I asked the question, a good business planning question, what do you want? And as the president of the company, he set his vision, I like to work all by myself. So we sold our company and we went our separate ways for our businesses and we stayed married. And I think this is a big reason why we did is that we don't work together because we had different visions. And having enough money was required for us to even have a conversation at this level. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you're starving, you know, we really can't talk about, you know, what the greater meaning of life is. We've got to get a meal in you. And so that's what, you know, that's what I do with my clients a lot of the time. If the financial situation is dire, let's fix that first, (sighs) get some breathing room, and then start looking at the bigger picture and asking the bigger questions. So journalistic questions, Matt, good interview questions or open-ended questions like, what do you want? And why are you doing this? And whom would you like to work for? And would you like to work with other people? In Hot Rod's case, no. So when when he said he didn't want to work with anybody else, he wanted to work on his own, was he referring to you know out there on the tools? Was he referring to the business side? Was he referring to everything? Well, what he did is he hung up his shingle as an expert, as a niche specialist. Like if you're a small or a one man band, you can have a very lucrative company if you're willing to get very niched or niched is mm-hmm. how I think it's pronounced in Australia. <laughs> niche, and, niche, or, mate. <laughs> probably niche, mate. It's probably properly pronounced in Australia. So, um, Doubt it. so if you're willing to, to um, be specialized, then you can charge what you want to charge. You only have so much time. So your clientele has to be very small. How many people could you serve? So you can charge a lot of money if you're willing to find people who are going to appreciate that niche. So this is what this is all within the conversation now of business planning. Mm-hmm. So when he decided I want to work all by myself, he meant the work. And then he had a part-time, he still does, has, has a part-time bookkeeper. And if he had a big job, he would hire day workers, right? Yeah. But his vision was he's just a lone wolf and he likes to work all by himself. And I am telling you, there is no wrong in anything that you want. It took me a minute to get over the hurt of that. But once I did, it was so liberating. Why not just let him do what he wants to do? And then I get to do what I want to do. So that's when I thought, well, what is it that I want to do? I like working on a team. I love collaboration. I wanted to know if the simple systems that I had been learning and developing would work to grow a business. Could I run a 10 or 20 truck outfit? And you know, as you start to clarify your intention, this is what business planning is, Matt. Let's define it for a minute first so that you get that out of this section. Mm -hmm. What is business planning? Business planning is anything you do that helps you clarify your intention and then take some aligned action and then Mm -hmm. test it. So the way I like to say it is dream, act, test. That's how you do it. Nice. like that? That's a good framework. (laughs) Okay, so you just make stuff up. What do you want? You answer those questions. And so you might say, I want to become the sustainability expert in my neighborhood. And I want to be the guy who's going to be cutting edge with solar and geo and gray water or one of those things. And you just pick this, you just make it up and you paint the picture of what it is that you want. And if someone tells you that that's impossible, don't listen to them just at least for a minute, just be willing to dream and to to lay claim to what it is that you want. For me, I wanted to know, if I had the chops to run a, bit, a bigger company, what would that be like? Could I be that kind of a leader? It became very compelling to me. And when Haran said he wanted to work all by myself, and now I am a boat afloat, and now I'm all by myself in my career, I didn't know how that was going to happen. But the intention was there, and I started to take some action. I started to consult with other mom and pop shops about how um, to fix their financials and put a little business plan in place. These were things that I had just learned and now I'm sharing them. And lo and behold, I get approached by a group of venture capitalists as I'm I'm putting on little seminars. I start writing books. I write for the magazines, gain a little um, cachet and exposure. And I am approached by a group of venture capitalists who say to me, would you like to be president of of a plumbing service company? Our intention is to be the country's largest home service plumbing company, to which I replied, (laughs) yes. Now, I didn't have any 
credibility to say yes. I didn't have the chops. The largest company I'd run was the one I ran with Hot Rod with four trucks, right? But when you put that intention out there, what I have found over and over and over in my life is that the hows could take many forms. And if you let go of the details, you know, just get that picture kind of vaguely drawn. I want to do this. I want it to feel like this. I want about this many trucks. I don't know how that's going to come on board. I'm going to take some action in that direction and I'm going to open myself up to serendipity. I have found over and over and over again that the universe, life in general, other people pick up on that energy and they conspire to help you reach your your dreams. And it may look a little bit different and it may be even better than you could imagine it. And all of this is a result of planning. So the the discipline of saying, this is what I want. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to create a Pinterest board. I'm going to put a financial plan together, you know, the budget. I'm going to put a mission statement together. This is why I'm doing what I want to do. Here's an organizational chart. I'm going to mock that up. I'm going to pretend that this company looks like the one in my head and I'm going to start acting as if and at least get on the path. What's the saying? Fake it till you make it? That's one way to say it. And I prefer (laughs) to say it, to act as if. It's less duplicitous sounding. It's less insulting. I agree. I hate that statement. You know, so fake it till it works, if that works for you. I mean, yes. But the idea of, I mean, haven't you felt like an imposter before? Absolutely. Constantly. I I, like... Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, if I I wake up and I don't get my head straight, I mean, I'm going to go into that kind of self-doubt for sure. So, Ellen, tell me, when we're talking about, okay, business planning, what's the, where's the line that we cross then into the business plan implementation? Okay. So, a business plan is crafting the vision and then taking aligned action. So, let me tell you what the elements of my business plan are. And I got news for you. They're very similar to a lot of other business plans. It's it's kind of like a Chevy or a, a Ford or a Dodge. If you go online and search business planning or you go to score an equivalent of that, like do you have a small business development agency or something, a government program that you can go and get some business help? We do actually. There, do. Yeah, there is. Yeah. There is a government pro- program that does offer that. Yeah, and they probably have some business planning help. And so you, you get some kind of a model. And, and my model has these components and many business plans have these have similar components. Okay. And I'll tell you where mine is different or a good plan is different from the standard. The standard is going to look like this. You're going to, you know, craft this vision of what you, you really, really want and come up with a list of goals. I want to have this much in sales. I want to have this many trucks. I want to have two locations by a goal is a two have by when statement. What I do that's a little bit different is I want you to start with an overall picture of what your life would look like. Write a perfect life essay. Create a Pinterest board of your whole life. And how does that business fit in? Put a vision board together. You know, depending on whether you're visual or or left brain or right brain, you know, find some way to gain clarity on what your life in this business could look like if the odds weren't against you, if if, if all of it were possible, knowing that you may or may not get there just for the joy of the journey, just for the attempt. Jim Rohn says, set a goal to make a million dollars, not for the money necessarily, but for what it will make of you in the attempt. Yeah, right. What, what's the... You uh, know, there's a journey. What's the say? If you shoot for the stars, what is it? Shoot for the, shoot for the sky. If you miss, you'll only hit the stars. Yeah. <laughs> and just that, like, wouldn't that just be a worthwhile journey? You know, it's not yeah. like you're going to work and, and trudge. I don't believe in that. Have some fun along the way. Just set a point on the horizon and start going. It's like, I'm going to go to Jakarta. Why not? You just pick a spot. So, okay, so the business plan is going to have some kind of visionary statement. You know, this is what I want or a picture or whatever. That's going to be a a private exercise, maybe not something that you show the bank, but the bank is going to want to see your goals, your financial goals, your budget. It's going to want to see an organizational chart. What kind of manpower are you going to need for this? And are you going to have your name in all the boxes? Are you going to hire some people? A little marketing plan. Who's going to want your your products and services? Where do they live? You know, who are these people who would say yes to the kind of thing? You're making it up. You're learning. You don't know. You just, you put a few thoughts together and you're going to improve it as you go, but do a first draft. Yeah. All right. And then you're going to come up with... um, maybe a sales plan. I'm going to adopt Kenny Chapman's sales program or something. And then you, you know, you mock up the, the, the overall plan. So you're going to have financial plan, a marketing plan, you can have goals, you 
kind of a mission statement. Here's my statement of why. You might have a list of values. These are all very traditional element, elements of a business plan. Now, here's what happens with most business plans. At that point, you show it to the bank and they say yes or no to a loan and it goes in the drawer or on the shelf. You never see that plan again. Now, what makes my approach different, and there are other people who also have adopted this philosophy, is at that point, I suggest you add a component. And Al talks about this, I'm sure, in his seven power concepts. He and I have a very similar approach when it comes down to the nitty gritty of getting this plan in action. Mm -hmm. And that's where you would assemble a list of projects that are going to move you in the direction of that intention. All right. So projects are things, well, a to-do is a one-off. A to-do is like call your mother and a project is throw your mother her 60th birthday party. Right. Okay. It's got multiple to-dos in it. That's all a project is a little, a little more complicated. So you're going to list the project. So if, if you want to create, let's say you want to create this sustainability company and become an expert in this area, what you might do is, I, you know what, I better take some classes on sus- sustainability. And maybe I need to look into licensing. And um, wow, are there people out there who already know how to do this in another country that I could mentor? Maybe I should find out who they are. Should I join an association? Should I read some books? Should I put a a little more thought into my marketing program? Should I look at leads requirements and buildings and some things that are going on in the area? You just, as you think of things, you write them down on this long, long list. You know, I've got to get a building. I've got to get trucks. I got to hire somebody. Boom, 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 boom. All of this goes on the list. And then you pick a few that you're going to energize. Now, Al calls this his priority project planners, top five. Pick one to three to five projects, no more that you're going to energize. And by energize, I mean, then those go on yours or someone's calendar. If you've got a bigger company, engage your team members to help you with these projects. I'll take this one. You take another one. Let's have a meeting. Let's use steps of delegation. Let's follow up the next week and and check on our agreed upon progress. But you're going to move into action by getting projects done. The mundane work of leadership is getting projects done. (laughs) <laughs> That's all of it. Doesn't that make sense? Like you can read books on leadership and it's kind of pie in the sky and philosophical. I suggest you read them. It's awesome. But like, how do you become a good leader? You get projects done and you teach other people how to do it too. That is the mundane work of leadership. So that's where you move this plan into action. Now you can go old school. Like I've got a three ring binder that has all those pages in it. And then my list of top projects, the ones that I'm focused on. I also have all of that on a Trello Trello board, you know, online. It's on my phone. It's on my iPad. It's on my computer. Mm -hmm. You can go old school or new school, but a list of projects and your calendar, these simple disciplines are required if you're going to get stuff done. Isn't this easy? I know. And the the good thing about having them too is like the accountability aspect of it. Like if it's written down and you're sharing it with people, you're so much more likely well, I find anyway, you're so much more likely to actually go ahead and do something if you've actually if, if you're being accountable to somebody else. You know what? They'll be be critical, be discerning as to who you share that with. Don't share your plans with people who are going to pee in your punch bowl. Mm. You know, just <laughs> just don't. You know, it, you may fail. This business may fail, but you don't need somebody pointing out how it can't work. All the time, talk to people who are going to give you, you know, ideas and maybe some candid feedback, but don't bother with the the Debbie Downer who's just going to tell you a hundred and run ways why this will never work and what the odds are in the statistics. I don't care about any of that. Mm. You know, the economy is no good. Somebody's making money. Yeah. And in our industry, well, how bad does it have to be before somebody calls a plumber? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As Kenny Chapman said, you know, there's... It doesn't matter what the economy is doing. People's drains are always going to block. It's it's not the economy. It's your economy. Yep. I mean, right? that's- and, and that's a, that's another thing that I've that I've learned with this business planning process. Business planning is a way for you to lay. If you're the owner of the company, it's your job to manage the money and to to establish the vision. Where are we going? And a business plan is a way for you to get your arms around that, clarify the vision, take action, test it measure your progress from where you are to where you want to be. And then writing it down is what allows you then to share it with your team. So you're starting your business and you say, hey, 
It may not look like much yet, but let me show you my plan. Let me show you the org chart and where you fit in. And let me show you the projects. Would one of these appeal to you? Is there another project you think we should put on our master list? You get engagement with this team and people want, some people want to be in on something great, right? Yep. It is, it's more than that. You know, at Zoom, we clear drains for a living, but what is happening at Zoom is so much bigger than that. These are people with careers and there's expansion and there's potential and there's good salaries and training and skill development. It goes so far beyond drains. Yeah. Right. And that to me is really, really exciting. And that doesn't just happen. It requires some planning, but it doesn't have to be that big a deal. That's why business uncomplicated. Your plan could fit on one piece of paper. I heard W. Clement Stone, who built the world's largest insurance agency, had a three by five card with three things on it every day that he kept in his breast pocket. Mm -hmm. There was some clarity of vision and aligned action. However you choose to do that, that's what I call business planning. And I encourage you to embrace it and have some fun with it. I'm so glad you just said that because my morning routine normally involves around getting up, I don't know, maybe six, quarter past six in the morning, something like that. And then coming into the office and writing down the, the five things that I want to get accomplished that day. And then mm -hmm. I shoot off down to the beach, go for a surf, grab a coffee, do whatever, and then come back oh. and get into the day. But I always do That's that. That's awesome. Yeah. So you but, start your day with that and then you go surfing? Well, I try, I try and get that out of the way first because then I can, when I come back, I know what I have to do, right? And it's just sort of there in front of me. It's like, bang, get this done. You feel great and you've had all that, you know, doesn't your body feel great coming out of the ocean? From oh, yeah, it? absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's a that's a lovely morning routine. So one of the things that I do as far as business planning goes is once a week, I have a meeting with me. And in that meeting, I flip through my business plan to re-inspire me, to, you know, remind me, okay, let's go big picture for a minute. What did I say? What are my goals? Wow, I'm making some things happen. Or wow, I've really dropped the ball on that one. Just kind of a check-in. I'll read my mission statement. Am I living that? Have I dropped the ball on that? Just reflect on it. I'll pair through the org chart and go, wow, well, is it time to hire somebody? I'll look at the financials, where I am compared to where I want to be. I'm just going to take a little pulse there. Look at the marketing plan. And then I go to the top project. So this is like, so I do mine on Sunday. So I take, I take, I block off an hour. Sometimes I only spend five minutes on it. Sometimes I'm a little more reflective. So I look at the big picture plan and then I look at that master list of projects and I look at my, you know, just basic to do is got to pick up the dog food or, you know, you've got stuff to do. And then I trot out the calendar and I block a really tight calendar. People make fun of my calendar, but I have on my calendar when I'm going to run, get my nails done, get a massage, when I'm going to read, dancing with the stars is on my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put in the big rocks. I put in what I want to do. Yeah. You know, I like to run. So if I don't put those runs in and I don't like to miss them, if I put the runs in, then I go yeah. most of the time. Sometimes I blow it off. And, you know, once the first shot is fired, it moves around. But if I've got it on my top projects, it has to be reflected somewhere on my calendar this week or next week. Is there a, an hour or two hour block to work on that? Because when is that going to happen mm -hmm. if you don't block the time? So I have a very tight calendar. And because I'm easily distractible, I set it up on Sunday. And then Monday, I do what I, I got lined up. I don't have to think about it. Like you going in and writing your, your top, top projects. If you don't get a handle on that right away, it's Friday and you don't know what happened. Yeah. And so that's my technique is I might map it out. Now, at the end of the day, this is something I learned from my buddy, Al Levy. I will review the day. Did I do it? That felt great. Did I not do it? I can move it or delegate it or drop it. I'm never going to do it. I'm going to take that off the calendar. Yeah. Screw it. And then I may then move the calendar, move it around, switch things up. So every day I'm going to assess and adjust so that when I come into work on Tuesday morning, I know what I'm going to do and I just sit down and do it. And, I'm, and I am fairly disciplined. I would say I'm like 80, 85% on that. If I come into the work and I look at it and I go, I don't want to do that today, I won't. Yeah. Right? But if I have it done, I just waste so much less time fussing about, well, should I do it now? Should I do it later? When can I? Just, just work the it. plan, baby. <laughs> work the plan. Yep. And uh, that this is really a great, we've had some good cliffhangers because that is where I want to go with our next topic, with the, 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 thir the third part of our, three-part series on, on making business uncomplicated, 
We talked about getting a grip on the, the financials. This uh, episode was about business planning made easy. And now we're going to talk about D-Day. That's, that's what's up next. And that, folks, is a wrap. So if you haven't already, head across to the siteshed.com and register for our Toolbox Talks, where you'll be regularly sent great episodes just like this straight to your inbox, so you'll never miss one. Uh, if you want to join the community, you can head across to the siteshed.com forward slash members, where for a small monthly fee, you'll get access to regularly updated training material, as well as access to our forum, where you can mingle and collaborate with trade-based business owners just like you from all over the world. If you're enjoying this podcast, please head across to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. We greatly appreciate it, and it helps us spread the word and reach the masses. Likewise, if you know anyone that might benefit from the content we create, then please go ahead and share this with them. You've been listening to Toolbox Talks by The Site Shed. For more great content just like this, head across to thesiteshed.com and join the amazing community of savvy trade-based business owners.